Welcome to the Ball Color Link Cut Flower Series. Today we'll be discussing cut flower callas. Calla bulbs are harvested in the late summer. The bulbs are allowed to cure for a few weeks so that the skin thickens, much like a potato would do. They're then treated with gibberellic acid or progib, and this increases the stem count per bulb. If you're buying new bulbs from Ball, they will be already treated before they're shipped to you. Calla bulbs have about a one year shelf life at the supplier, and they store them at about 49 degrees Fahrenheit. This allows them to be shipped basically 52 weeks out of the year, even though they're only harvested once a year. For cut flower production, you want to make sure you use the larger bulb, size 20, 22 centimeter or larger. When the cow shipment arrives, you should open up the box and let the bulb sit for two or three days, so any scratches from shipping are allowed to cure before planting. You can store the bulbs at about 49 degrees until planting. The bulbs, when they arrive, should be clean and firm with no mold or soft spots. If you look at the picture here, you can see that the bulb on the right has a small bulb attached to it in the bottom left of that bulb. You don't want to separate callas, either new ones that you've purchased or if you save them and dig your own and replant them. You don't want to separate them, just plant the big bulb together. If you separate them, you're opening up a uh, soft tissue to possible rot in the future. You want to make sure you order the bulbs in advance so they're reserved for you. That means if you want to plant bulbs every four weeks all summer, you want to place that order in the spring and just schedule different shipments throughout the season. They're offered in bags of 25 per color or variety, but Edney also offers a cut flower collection that has seven colors with five bulbs of each. This is helpful if you're selling at a farmer's market because the more colors you have available, the more flowers you'll be able to sell without having to buy 25 of each color. Calla bulbs are planted with the smooth side down and the eyes of sprouts pointing up. You cover with about two inches of soil above the bulb. An interesting thing about callus is the roots grow out of the top of the bulb and then curl around and grow down. They do not grow out the bottom of the bulb like a tulip or a daffodil. You can grow them in brown, ground beds in a greenhouse or tunnel and use 12 inch spacing. If you're growing in the field, you would also do 12 inch spacing. You want to be careful not to plant them too close so that will reduce the flower count because they don't get enough light down in the center of the plant. They can be grown in bulb crates, planting five bulbs per crate. Use four to five inches of soil under the bulb, and then the same two inches of soil above the bulb. Um, a soil mix to use would be ProMix BX or anything similar when you're growing in crates. When callas are first planted, I'm not saying anything about the water. <clears throat> when first planted, callas do best if grown at about 72 degrees. This allows them to sprout faster. Cool temperatures of 80. Oh, God. Ah! When first planted, callas do best if grown at about 72 degrees. Cooler night temperatures of 60 are okay once they are sprouted. You want to be careful not to plant them out in the field too early in the spring. Be sure to wait till the soil temperature is at least 55 degrees or warmer. If grown in the crates, they should be grown on the ground, not up on benches in the greenhouse or tunnel, because that would cause the soil to get too warm later in the growing process and could cause disease problems. Also during the warm summer months, you can take and sprinkle straw over the plants before they sprout. This will help keep the soil cooler. And also in the summer, if you grow them under 50% shade cloth or afternoon shade, this will help increase the stem length and also help to keep the soil cool. It's really important to water them very well after planting, but then no more water until they're up and the leaves begin to unfurl. 
it's okay if they are slightly dry during this process until they actually have leaves growing and showing, they don't need any more water. After they're up and the leaves are showing and have opened up and there's several leaves, then you need to give them more water, but be careful not to overwater them. Once you see a lot of flower buds starting to be visible, then you can increase the watering sometimes two to three times a week, depending on the temperature, how windy it is, and so forth. The cut flower callas are ready to harvest about eight to nine weeks after planting, and the plants continue to bloom for three to four weeks. It works really well to succession plant callas every four weeks, and that we can have a uh, continuous supply of cut flowers all season. You would start planting usually in late spring and continue planting until early August. Just to be careful later in the season in July and August that you do give them the shade or straw over them so the soil doesn't get too hot. An interesting thing with callus is that you do not cut the flower, you actually pull them. What you do is you grasp the stem round, down low, close to the ground, and pull straight up, and it'll snap off from the bulb. Then what you'll do is line up the flower heads as you pick them, and then cut the stems all to be the same length. Um, after pulling them, you do want to make sure you cut the bottom of the stem. Um, and then what you do is you take them and put them in bunches of 10 to 20 and rubber band them at the bottom, and then lightly rubber band it just below the flower heads. This will help keep the flower stems straight and keep them from slipping down in the bucket and getting crooked stems. If you use a tall, narrow bucket or even a tall vase, that helps hold the stems upright. You can also pull some of the leaves from the plants, and they can be used as a green filler in bouquets. The water in the bucket or the vase should be shallow, just two to three inches of water. Don't fill with water all the way to the top of the bucket or the top of the vase. Uh, Calla stems do best if they're not submerged in the water. You want to make sure you use clean water, and if you use a disinfectant in the water, something like a chlorine tablet works well. Because callus have such a long uh, shelf life on the plant, growers can plan to harvest just a couple days a week. For example, just harvest on Mondays and Fridays. You don't have to worry about picking them every day like you do with lilies or sunflowers. Callus can be held in the cooler at 35 to 38 degrees for seven to 10 days, and then they still have a seven to 10 day vase life, sometimes even longer. Cows do benefit from fertilizer, and you want to use a fertilizer that's low in phosphorus, something like a 16, 4, 12, or something similar. Cows are winter hardy in zones 7 and warmer. In colder areas, you would need to dig them in the fall and replant in the spring. The bulb will have increased in size, so do not break apart or try to divide any bulbs that you dig that you dig up. Saved callus that are not treated with gibberellic acid will have fewer flowers the next year. So if your plant had eight stems this year and you dig that bulb and replant it next year without treating it with gibberellic acid, you may only get two or three stems on that plant. Um, you can treat your bulbs that you save. Uh, just follow the instructions on their ProGib label. Uh, callus are listed on the label. I like with any cut flower crop, there's always a, a few problems you got to watch out for. Um, Japanese beetles can damage the calla flowers, um, especially the yellow and white varieties. But the Japanese beetles are usually only out there for three or four weeks in the middle of the summer, so you can could do an early planting and a late planting to avoid that. Um, pythium is where the the roots are translucent looking and they're rotting. That's from too much water or soil that doesn't drain well. So that's why it's important not to overwater in the first three to four weeks when the plants aren't using much water. Then Irwinia, or soft rot, that smells like rotting potatoes. It's a secondary disease that occurs after pythium or some other problem. You, again, usually caused by too much water or soil with poor drainage. Now there's another calla we haven't talked about yet. That's the uh, Ethiopica calla. That is a much larger white flower. Uh, the stems can be 36 inches long or more. They're actually growing from a rhizome or a root section. It's not a bulb or a tuber. Uh, they grow wild in the Pacific Northwest in wet areas, and they're actually on the invasive species list in California. 
They can be greenhouse grown in other areas for spring blooms. Um, and they're often also grown in the summertime in pots submerged in fish ponds. Thank you for joining us today. And if you have any questions about callas or any other cut flowers, talk to your ball color link sales rep or the color link office.